the president for giving me the opportunity to come again to this appointed place. Master of Ceremonies for the evening, Pastor James, who was my host this morning. I'm grateful to him. And he for the good experience I had there this morning, Pastor James and the fine the Eden Baptist Church. Yellow, yellow, yes, yes. Now, as always, your prayers are needed. For prayer and preaching go together. Yes, sir. What God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. Ushers, you may sit. Most of us, if not all of us, are television fans. We watch various programs day after day, night after night, week after week. And some of the programs we watch are not original. They are what is known as reruns. They are programs that we have seen, but we elect to sit and watch them again. We know full well what they are what they are about. Reruns. And yet, we watch them. I want to say a word about 
rerun. The best way to read the Bible, the best way to have the Bible come alive is to see yourself in what you read. When I was a pastor in Shreveport, Louisiana, there was a dear woman in the Little Union Baptist Church who never failed to say to me, you preached a good sermon, but he didn't hit me. And for all the years that I was there, not a sermon ever hit her. And I have wondered since that far off day, where was she? I've never heard a sermon in my life that did not hit me one way or the other. It either commended me for some good I was trying to do or some evil I had done or was thinking about doing. Let it be said again, the best way to have the Bible come alive is to see yourself in what you read. Some people who come to church bring a pitchfork. And a pitchfork is used for that purpose to pitch things, to throw things over to some other place. And that's what some people do in the worship. All of the truths that the preacher proclaimed uh -huh. are taken and pitched over yes, to somebody else. They sit there and wish that so-and-so had been there uh -huh. to hear the sun. But thank God for those who bring a rake. <laughs> the 
those who use the pitchfork. <coughs> you got them, Doc. Teach all the gospel over to somebody else. But those who bring a rake, yes, sir. take what is heard and apply it yes, to themselves. Rerun. When you read the Bible, you read it most profitably. Uh -huh. yeah. When you see yourself right. in what you read. Right. Well, let's look at some of these. Look at this man, Noah. All right. Come on. Come on. The world's first ship build. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. 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 Noah. 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 The friend of God. Yeah. Noah. Yes, sir. Yeah. The one who held converse with God. Yes, sir. Noah. Uh -huh. The one who listened to what God had to say uh -huh. and then followed to the letter uh -huh. what God had outlined. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The flood came yeah. and uh, in due time uh -huh. the waters receded. Yes. Yeah. Talk about it. And the ark is landed on Mount Ararat. Uh -huh. And uh, Noah, Noah. Noah plants a vineyard. Uh -huh. <coughs> and from the vineyard, he gets grapes. Uh -huh. And from the grapes, he gets wine. Uh -huh. And he drank a little wine. And he drank a little more. And he drank a little more. And he ends up drunk in his tent. Now the tragedy is that there was a new world to be constructed. There was a new order to be set in order. And Noah was the man to be in charge. But in the face of that responsibility, Noah is drunk in his tent. Now, in how many instances have we been given a responsibility and we have met that responsibility with drunkenness? You see, you can be drunk on ambition. You can be drunk on things other than wine. A new world needed to come to the fore, yeah, yeah. and the leadership of Noah was needed, uh -huh. but he was drunk in his tent. Yeah. And uh, in so many instances, when we are faced with demanding responsibilities, we respond uh, 
by being drunk. In so many cases, when we are faced with things that we need to be doing, things that we need to be up and about, we are drunk in the first one kind of tent and ill. And uh, we find uh, ourselves being rerun of what Noah was when drunk in his tent. But then there is another man in uh, the Old Testament by the name of Jonah. Jonah was given an assignment and uh, instead of carrying out his assignment he attempts to run away from God but whoever attempts to run away from God will find himself or herself running out of running room. Whoever attempts to run away from God will soon discover that wherever you run to, God has already been there. Well, Jonah had an assignment, but he attempted to run away from God and ended up in a storm. Whoever attempts to run away from God will end up in a storm. Whoever attempts to shrink a God-given responsibility will end up in a storm. Whoever attempts to flaunt his authority in the face of God will end up in a storm. But in how many instances have we been given a responsibility and uh, instead of doing uh, what the Lord told us to do we have uh, gone off in another direction in how many instances uh, have God told us to go one place and we have gone uh, in another direction. In how many instances have we been given an assignment and uh, we have not been in agreement with that assignment and we have uh, attempted to run away from God. Well, I said to you in uh, my little talk this evening uh, that we are <clears throat> reruns of Jonah. For in so many instances, God gives us an assignment and instead of doing uh, what God tells us to do, um, we have attempted to do something else. We find uh, that we are <clears throat> but reruns of Jonah. Now let's go to the old, to the New Testament and uh, look at the man Peter and uh, 
you recall in your reading that Peter denied Christ. He had walked with him and he had talked with him and yet he denied him. He knew him well, but he denied him. In how many instances have you and I denied the Son of the living God? He has done so much for us, and yet we from the Time to time have denied him. He has been good to us. And in so many instances, we have denied him. Well, Peter is not the only one who denied him. In so many instances, you and I have denied him also. Well, there's another man in the New Testament by the name of Judas. Yeah, Judas betrayed him, and uh, we have... Uh, criticized Judas for betraying him. No man has ever named his son Judas. We think that Judas did a mean thing when he betrayed the Son of God. We Think that Judas did a low thing when he betrayed the Son of God. And yet in how many instances have you and I betrayed him? For when we behave in a fashion that's far into his spirit we betray him when we behave in a fashion that's not becoming to christian men and women we betray him when we yes exact attitudes and actions that are not in keeping with his spirit we betray him when we exert conversations and conduct not in keeping with his spirit we betray him well you and I are just reruns of what we read in the Bible every now and then. Yes, I find I'm like Noah every now and then. I find that I'm like Jonah every now and then. I find that I'm like Peter every now and then. I find that I am like Judas. But I think I ought to tell you, I do not want to be like Noah. I do not want to be like Jonah. I do not want to be like Peter. I do not want to be like Judas, but I tell you, I want to be like Jesus in my heart. I don't know how you feel about it, but I can tell you this 
this evening and I want to be like Jesus in my heart. I want to be like Jesus in my conversation. I want to be like Jesus in my conduct. I want to be like Jesus in my attitude. I want to be like Jesus in my action. I want to be like Jesus in my outlook. I want to be like Jesus in my talk. I want to be like Jesus in my walk. Jesus born in Bethlehem, reared in Nazareth, baptized in the Jordan, performed miracles in a desert place, and wept to Jerusalem and prayed in Gethsemane, and stood his trials uh, and on just courts, and on Friday went on to Calvary. Now on Calvary, you hung bread and died that Friday when he gave up the ghost of veil in the temple, red in twain from top to bottom, not from bottom to top, but from top to bottom, the earth shook from center to circumference, and all hell enlarged the self and opened the mouth without measure. Demons of damnation sported themselves in hellish glee and Sinai rocked and bellowed and Lebanon shook his frost the top and the centurion said, Truly! Truly! That must be a righteous man. The name and body in a borrowed grave, but in soon. Soon, Sunday morning, he came out of the grave with all power. His hand. He lives. He lives. I want to be like him. Oh, 